I sold my jewelry to send him to college. I sold my land for his marriage. But my son left me and went away to the city along with his wife. Where do I go? I don't know whether my son will ever get a job after schools. But of this I'm sure that he will never do farming after he becomes educated. Only one third of children between 10 to 12 years in India have completed primary education. Fifty-one percent of rural girls between 10 to 11 years are out of school. Forty point two five percent of children studying in class one to five drop out. The number of non literates today exceeds the total number of our population at the time of independence. But our real questions are still deeper. The current education is cutting us off from our roots. Is there an education which will take us to the roots? Will education end up becoming just a factory supplying what the market demands? Or will it shape citizens who understand the real needs of the country and the society and then create solutions? Today, many individuals and institutions are seeking answers to these questions. One such institution working in the remote areas of Uttaranchal is Sith. A mission, a search, a journey. Located in Devidhar near Kempti village and surrounded by the scenic beauty of the Himalaya, Bodhigram is just 12 kilometers northwest of the popular hill station of Masuri. Bodhigram is the hub of SIDS activities where new ideas and energy are generated. SIDH stands for Society for Integrated Development of Himalayas. It began its work merely as an agency of development in 1989. But in the course of its journey, over the next six to seven years, it had a variety of rich experiences which changed its course. First of all, SIDH is an um, organization which is primarily concerned with education. Education by definition has a larger scope, larger range and larger set of concerns. No education is complete if you are going to tell your uh, beneficiaries that my dear friend let us talk of these following subjects but not about the others. So they, it is a dialogical process where almost the whole of life comes into play and is taken into account. Seeking to do something meaningful in their lives, an IIT graduate Pawan Gupta and an experienced teacher Anuradha Joshi came to Masuri. Siddh as an institution was born in 1989, starting from a small village school in Bhedian in Jaunpur block of Teri district as a response to the community's demand. और यही वो जगह है 
This is the place where we started our first school. A few local youths joined as volunteers. Some local people helped us and we began our work from here. Sid journey has been a saga of rich learning leading to exploring the assumptions of prevalent education system and upgradation of quality in school education. Within a very short time, it spread to about 40 villages with 18 schools, catering to over 600 students. It is a very good example of uh, the kind of work that uh, Save the Children wishes to promote and, and support. And I think, you know, we have had a long relationship uh, with Save. And I think precisely because they have uh, looked at this issue of the purpose of education and what the aims of education should be and how to actually make it relevant to the lives of those children and the communities in, in the society and villages where they live. Uh, and looking at the whole, the holistic aspects of education. And I think in that way, you know, Sid was, is, is a very good example. Sid has conducted many experiments in the area of primary and secondary education during the last 14 years. It has made efforts to locally contextualize education it has taken the process of education out of the four walls of classrooms. Sid has been able to remove the barriers between school and local communities and schools and homes. It has sensitized the local youth towards the strengths and weaknesses of their communities. Although working in the field of education, SIDS engages itself with issues that concern the entire humanity. It remains in continuous dialogue with the outside world. Those working in SID get a wide exposure. They deliberate upon various issues amongst themselves, the team and with outsiders and this benefits the individual team members in many ways. It broadens their horizons, their perspective. Moreover, this process of continuous dialogue helps them sharpen their thoughts and their understanding. Sid is a vehicle in our pursuit of meaning in life, and this search is continuing. 1989. Sid initially limited itself to increasing the access in education and did not think beyond expanding its program. It believed that making primary education accessible to every child would be the magic solution to all the ills of society. In the early years, Sith did not distinguish between literacy and education. In its naivety, it believed, like many other well-meaning agencies of development, that rural communities were backward and that literacy alone would open the floodgates of development and all would be well. But it was these very so-called backward non-literate people of the villages of Jaunpur block who later became their real gurus, a source of great learning for Sidh. Sidh began to look at these people in a completely different manner. It began to understand, empathize and respect their worldview and their lives. 
many notions about education changed radically as distinctions between literacy and education became clearer. Doubts about the relevance of the prevalent system of education began to grow and left a big question mark on modern education. Education which is about life, which has vibrancy, which the children can directly relate to. Education in which the student can learn, can internalize by touching and feeling things. We call such an education meaningful, relevant education. And this can happen when the context is local, social and physical environment. We had to work very hard with our teachers first. They required a thorough unlearning because they too were like all of us, products of the same system which we want to change. So we began with them. At that time, Sith too faced the problem of school dropouts. When it explored the roots of this problem, it discovered that not all the dropouts from its schools were girls or from the scheduled classes, but all the 18 dropouts from its schools belong to nuclear families. Sith began to acknowledge and respect the perspectives of the local community. In the process, it discovered that in the rural areas of Uttaranchal, joint families were more prosperous than the nuclear families. In joint families, women's work was shared and they got support during pregnancies and childbirth. It gave them time off from work to go out to Melas and Micah, their parents' home. Children, the disabled and the aged could be cared for. But our textbooks only sang praises of the small family, saying, Chota Parivar, Sukhi Parivar. In fact, seeking answers to many such puzzling questions led to the formation of Sanshodhan the research and advocacy wing of Sith, a research with a difference, grounded in the community, in their own voices, a perspective not from outside but from within. Nothing can be created afresh nor destroyed. Every society has its own rituals, set of beliefs and customs and these must have served the purpose of the society for generations. They need to change with time like all other things that change with time. And since our institution is strongly entrenched within the community, it seeks to understand the society and tries to identify the changes required in traditions and customs of our society. Sanshodhan, our research wing, is born out of that need to understand and explore. And we try to incorporate this learning into our curriculum. Vimarsh is another related program wherein we share our findings with the villagers and also get their opinion. We also share these findings with the policy makers, academia and journalists through our three-day seminar program called Samvad. So in this way, Sanchodhan is a program that deepens our understanding and simultaneously allows us to share the insights with the rest of the world. In this way, it also symbolizes our efforts at integrating our various activities. Siddh integrates all its research studies into its programs. A matter of quality and child and the family are two significant studies done by Sanshodhan which highlight the dilemmas between the aspirations and beliefs of the people and the ground reality. We must first understand the concept of history and our own history in order to understand the history from the textbooks. Only then do we realize how various incidents in the past have shaped the destiny of our village, our people. It is only then that we come to know. Modifications done in the programs due to learning from their research 
is part of a learning cycle. परिवेश को देख करके आसपास की जो भी उसके पास. When the child learns through his or her surroundings, immediate environment, his immediate experience gets involved. He touches, feels, observes directly, and thus it is easy to make connections. All this ignites the child's creativity in a spontaneous manner. When our children observe the Bhimal tree for themselves, they write original poems. Normally, these kids are forced to just cram the facts and information. But in our way of teaching, they are stimulated and start writing poems of their own. तो उस पर आधारित वो कविता बनाता है। भीमल की उम्र साठ साल, उसके छिलके से धोते हम बाल, इसकी मोटाई लगभग पांच छह इंच, फल खाने तो शाखा को खींच। हम इस पेड़ को शुभ मानते, हम इसकी लकड़ी जलाते, तना होता इसका मोटा भोजन रखता तने में इकट्ठा Similarly Sid views gender relations as mutually complementary roles पूरे उत्तरांचल में महिलाओं का एक बहुत सशक्त रोल है Women in Uttarakhand have always played a very strong role in the socio-economic fabric of the society They are not weak In this sense we do not think there is any need to empower them all that is needed is to acknowledge this fact. This is one thing. Secondly, we look at the gender issue in terms of complementarity between man and woman. They have different roles, and if they perform their roles with self-respect and with respect towards one another, I think we have done what we want. Sid's journey has been both enriching and refreshing as they've constantly deepened their understanding about the people and society around them. Pulmo Devi has played a crucial role in broadening Sid's horizons. Pulmo says, A job has no roots. We have a direct relationship with our bread or roti. We grow it and eat it. But you have to study first, take a job to earn money, and even then, you depend on the market to buy food for yourself. We are the masters of the soil. We are the masters of the grass. Literate youth leave their villages to go to nearby towns, and educated urban youth leave their towns to go abroad. What will happen to our villages and the country then? Sid's quest for relevant, meaningful and functional education drew it closer to the local community and it learnt many lessons from them. It learnt that the delicate skill of pounding rice is more like an art and is similar to bringing up children. Once we organized an event, a celebration of pounding paddy in one of the villages, one woman told me that pounding paddy was an art by itself. We have to put just the right amount of pressure so that the husk is removed but the grain of rice does not break. She said, you must teach this art in your schools. And more importantly, tell your teachers that they should also keep this in mind to put just enough pressure upon the student to remove his or her negativities, but not so much pressure that the human spirit is crushed. I have never come across a more appropriate and a more humane definition of education even in an international seminar on education. Sis main strength is this, that their vision of education presumes that the educators learn something from the, those being educated. Uh, it's a reciprocal process and um, there is a mutual enrichment and expansion of selves 
and lifestyles. There is an enrichment of lifestyles on both sides. Uh, in fact, uh, SEED is one of those NGOs which has taken to logical conclusion a primary principle of what I might call um, the post pedagogical age, a kind of education where education does not mean only teaching, education means a dialogical process in which both parties participate on a basis of an equ equality and both learn something from it. That's its strength. SIDS constantly experiments in its schools. SIDS sends not only its researchers but also its teachers and students to the villages to learn. They get valuable and practical information and both teachers and children return with new respect for the elderly, non-literate but well-informed and knowledgeable village community. Science, the way it is being taught, has become superstition. I'll explain. You talk to an average educated person and you say anything and you say this is proven scientifically and the person just shuts up thinking that he, how can he challenge science. Most of the market economy runs on this paradigm. There is an experiment where the children are asked to take a saucer, put a candle there, light the candle, put some water in the saucer and then a glass is taken and inverted over the lit candle. After some time, the candle, candle extinguishes and the water in the glass rises up. Now the book of science says that look, science believes what it sees. It doesn't believe in hearsay. What have you seen? You have observed that the, the water inside the glass has risen after the candle extinguished. So then it draws a conclusion that the candle extinguished because the entrapped air, the oxygen inside the entrapped air got burnt out and to replace that oxygen the water has risen inside the glass. What we do is that we take three saucers. What do we see now? What we see is where there were three candles the water rises much more where there were two candles, the water rises a little less. Where there was only one glass, the water rises still less. The question which we leave the child with is that if the explanation given in the book is correct, then the water should have risen to the same, same level in all the three glasses irrespective of the number of candles. Because the entrapped air is exactly the same amount and therefore the oxygen in the air is also the same amount. These experiments led Sidh to a systematic content analysis of textbooks and Sidh has found that most of the textbooks send strong messages which look down upon the rural lifestyles and consider them as backward. The villagers never pollute the Ganga by throwing waste into it while all the urban waste goes into the rivers. But we are told that city dwellers are developed and cultured and that the villagers are backward. Villagers, unlike urban people, never pollute rivers because rivers are sacred to them. We should decide for ourselves who is more cultured. Do not mistake him for a teacher. He is Gopal Bhai from Bhatoli village, explaining various characteristics of a kharik tree. Another example of how Siddh has broken out of the mold of regular schooling. How it has contextualized teaching and learnings with villages. An outcome of this has been the unique publication called Hamare Jaunpur Ke Peer Paudhe. A book on local trees compiled by the children of class 3 to 5 of SID schools. All other publications of SID are the outcome of such activities. 
Himalaya Heart is a concrete step taken by Sid towards self-reliance. The knowledge of a child from a Sid school is equivalent to that of a much higher class student of another school. You ask about Hindi or English words or maths of children from other schools and they don't have the correct answers. But the Sidh children are good at both the languages and perform better in maths as well. That is why we are sending more and more children to Sidh schools. Each of the Sid schools now have their own assets, their own managing committees. There is an unbreakable bond between the people and the schools. Today, these schools really belong to the villagers rather than to Sidh, an achievement by itself. Whenever there is some marriage in the village, the whole school participates. We participate in cooking food, collecting firewood and all other activities. Unlike the government school, we close our school according to the need of the village. For instance, we close the school for full or half day when an elder in the village passes away because for us, each elder is the school's guardian. Our school building was not cemented earlier, nor the floor. The teacher requested cementing because the children were uncomfortable. We encouraged the village Pradhan to give money to the school and also contributed our labor to finish the job. Whenever the teachers tell us, we try to organize funds accordingly by collecting donations and also do manual work in the school for the sake of a better future of our children. Another interesting example that stands as testimony to Sid's work is Sanjay Rawat, a former teacher of Sid's Combining the active village support and his own training in Sith, he's currently building a new school in Ghati called Swajan Shiksha Kendra. Let us see what he has to say. I look at Swajan Shiksha Kendra as an extension of Sith. I believe that people like me who are trying to start new schools like this are actually expanding the philosophy of Sid. My relation with Sid is like a family member. Whenever I find my strength waning and I need fresh energy, I go to Sid. We discuss things openly and I come back recharged. I start afresh then. It has been like this for me. Has there been any training? You train animals, not human beings. With people, you can only work at the level of intellect or understanding. One can, of course, train a servant on how to do this or that, or train an army recruit, but not a teacher or a responsible citizen. You can help him or her realize the things, the world, the problems, the systems, etc. Look, each one of us wants to be happy. This is a common human trait. What I have tried to do is to help my colleagues in Sid to feel happier in whatever they are doing here. If I am able to establish a link between their happiness and the work they do here, then I think my job is done. If they understand the relevance of their work, then work gives them inner happiness and becomes gratifying and beautiful, very meaningful. I can tell you this much only. Otherwise, I don't have any training module or system as such. Not 
Northa. Village Northa symbolizes the deep bond of cooperation between a village and its school. Northa had a profound impact upon Sanjay's life. The teacher inside him was born in this village only. When I came here as a teacher, I decided to try out something new. The whole school went round the village on a weekly cleanliness drive. The villagers realized that the school is doing something for the good of the village. Then we started developing a nursery of various flowers and vegetable plants and sold it to the villagers. This benefited them and the school as well. It was in Northa that Sanjay got a lot of freedom to experiment on his own with many innovative ways in relevant education. Bal Sabha was one such experiment which created a space for children to express themselves in many different ways. Bal Sabha has enhanced my leadership capabilities in the village also. I am now able to give practical suggestions sometimes to my elders in the family as well as in the village about how we children can contribute in their matters. Bal Sabha is a student body in which students are free to express their opinion. If they have some problem with any other fellow student or even a teacher, they speak about it openly in the Sabha. Bal Sabha radically transformed the relations between the teacher and the students. It was this warmth between teachers and students that brought Vinod back from Central School. I got admitted to Central School after passing the entrance test. But after some time, I told my parents that I will not study there and would go back to the Siddh school. The teachers here in Siddh are more caring and open. Moreover, I get a chance to pursue extracurricular activities of my interest here. Some years ago, about four years ago, we were exposed, you know, we were fortunate enough to get in touch with a, a philosophy called Jeevan Vidya, which has really um, radically given us a lot of um, important uh, inputs into what we call samajdari in education, which is understanding. Earlier, the way we used to teach in our balwadis was through the sensory organs, uh, the, through the five sensory organs like touching, seeing, hearing. But today, we also focus attention of the child, uh, something abstract like feelings. And that is something new for us. And uh, so we concentrate also on how the child is feeling inside, whether the child is feeling good or bad. And we often focus the attention on feeling good. And we also uh, explain to the child that feeling good is something which is very natural to all human beings. A village woman once demanded from Sith, teach our children to be true to themselves and not to focus on appearances and show off. Building and working on the individual has been very important in Siddh since the beginning. We have never been project-oriented or driven by an agenda set up by other agencies. We have formulated our own projects based on our own understanding of the situation. We have worked on people. Siddh has tried to focus on to be. In all its activities, it has consciously and carefully designed all its programs in order to address issues of alienation and feeling of backwardness. Siddh has attempted to strengthen positive self-image and identity of the youth of Uttaranchal. It tries to enable them to acknowledge the significance of self-esteem. 
When these workers joined us, most of the boys had passed only class eight, and the girls had passed class five. So now, if they are postgraduates, then it is an achievement, because they carried on with their studies while doing their work. Another important thing is that these youngsters have been doing research with their own people, which makes their data more reliable and more authentic. There is a qualitative difference between research done by an outsider and that done by a local person who knows the nuances of communication of his or her own society intimately. The typical modern research lacks this empathy. This is a big gap, according to me. I have been interacting with Sid for the last 10 years in one form or another. Formal, informal interactions. I have been talking to their workers as well as their core team members. I like many things about Sid. While it is working in the field of education, it is not like other fund-seeking NGOs. Technically, it is indeed an NGO, but the various processes and activities that these people keep on doing takes them to a different category. I would even say that Sid is more than an NGO, it is a social movement. Technically, NGO कह सकते हैं आप लेकिन उनका उनका जो कार्य का तरीका है कार्यकलाप है जिस प्रक्रिया से प्रक्रिया चलाते हैं अपने कामों को लेके ये सब देखते हुए लगता है कि वो एनजीओ भी है और एक अलग किस्म के एक आंदोलन भी है। I feel that here I can fulfill my aim to do something meaningful in my life. Something worthwhile, so that I can establish or justify my existence as a human being. In this way, Sid is a turning point in my life. Sanjeevni, a one-year residential course for youth, is an example of this. I look at Sanjeevni this way. I think that our current system of education does not guide the younger generation on how to think. They become imitators. So in Sanjeevni, we decided that we would guide them how to think, not what to think. This was the idea behind starting Sanjeev. One may ask, what is the core of this trend in Sith? Certainly it is not the Sith activists alone but a large family of well-wishers spread across the nation. Sam Dong Rinpoche, Dharampal, Baba Nagraj, Kishan Patnaik, Dhiru Bhai Shet, Vidya Nivas Mishra, Ran Singh Aare, Ravi Rai, Anupam Mishra and Rajiv Vohra. It is a long list of friends who have helped in this gratifying exploration. Sith is now moving on to another new experiment, that of making interpersonal relationships a part of their school curriculum. They believe that many insurmountable problems of the present times could be solved through educating the human mind to understand itself and to understand its relationship with the other. In short, better human relations, a better world. All like-minded people are most welcome to join Sith, to envision, to seek and to work together for a better world.
living is one thing and merely swallowing barrels of information is quite another. The cunning yet educated we found in plenty all around but living according to one's learning and not swayed by material desires and diktats we found not too many. Listen my literate and learned brother do not look down upon us do not try to strangle us with your hollow words we will judge you by your deeds alone we will look behind the glitter of your clothes not whether your food is coarse or super fine not whether you earn less live frugally or shine living is one thing merely swallowing barrels and barrels of information quite another